you're, God, you're jealous of us. That just blows my mind that the creator of the universe, I know I see this a lot, but the one that created the universe, the creator of us, the one that created us, the one that put the stars in their orbit, the one that created the stars, the galaxies, the earth, the one that created the forest, the, the DNA, the complexity of the DNA, scientists still can't even fully comprehend it. That God is jealous of us. Uh, Father, we just thank you this moment. We thank you for your love. Yeah, God, we thank you for your love. God, I thank you, Lord, because it's written in your word that there's nothing that can separate us from your love, God. God, your word says that your mercy is new every single morning. God, we don't deserve you. We don't deserve your love, but yet you still give yourself away. You still unconditionally and undeservingly just gave yourself to us, Lord. God, our response to the cross and our response to your love is worship. Our response is our surrender. God, this moment, we just thank you for your love. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you so much, Father. Thank you. Thank you for loving us, even in our worst moments. Personally, God, I remember looking back. You loved me at my, at my darkest moments, God. You never left me. And I'm just so forever grateful, Lord. Thank you. And God, I just pray, God, that tonight, Lord, that people want to leave the same after listening to this hop or watching this later as a video. God, I just pray, Father, that your love will become real, Lord. That's my prayer, Lord. That they wouldn't just see your love as just information, but that they would see your love as revelation, God. God, I just pray that over them. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. And amen. Well, what's up, guys? Welcome to House of Peace. Let me put my chat on if I can see you guys. Welcome to House of Peace. I want to welcome those that are watching live. And I want to welcome those that are watching later. Bro, I don't know. People actually watch YouTube. They, they actually watch the YouTube replay, which is pretty interesting so shout out to all my people watching on youtube thank you for the support for real but i want to welcome you guys to house of peace man i love wednesdays wednesdays just have such a special place in my heart we get to just come on here and just you know i love you guys so much really well i want to welcome you guys to house of peace uh i want to welcome you if this is your first time if this is your first time i want to welcome you thank you like i say all the time and thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking this time to 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 learn about the word of God, to, to learn, and not just learn about God, but get to experience and know him. You see, the Bible says it's the hungry that get fed. The Bible says those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. That's a promise. So I, 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 I know that God's going to fill us up tonight. So again, thank you for taking the time. If you don't know what a hop is, hop stands for house of peace. We are an extension from our local church called King Jesus Ministry. House of Peace is something we do every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time through Zoom. It's where we teach a fresh new lesson based on the Bible every week, where we encourage you, where we disciple you, where we teach you. So I love it, guys. Um, Man, I'm so grateful to be here. Look, I want you guys to do something for me. Look, I want you guys to drop wherever you, wherever you watch it from, wherever state, wherever country you're watching from, drop it in the chat. I, I want to see where you guys are walking, uh, watching from. And as you guys do that, today was going to be a little special. I'm having my boy, the man, the myth, the legend, the shadow boxing obsessed dude. <laughs> Come on, that'd be an intro, Let's bro. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, Peter beat the crap on me today, bro. He did me so bad. What happened? Bro, you, bro, you shadow boxed me, bro. You beat me oh, so dude. bad, bro. <laughs> this man at school is playing me. Uh, uh, hey, bro. You're obsessed. Oh, stop. We got people from Arizona. We got people on. from Philly, from Florida, 305. Let's go. Pennsylvania. 305. More from the Philadelphia. Let's go. Well, I'm so excited, man. My boy Peter, we're doing this. Bro. Let's Come go. on, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Bro. That is very powerful, bro. I'm excited for tonight, bro. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know God is going to do something. My boy Larry is, is tuning in from the cruise. From the cruise? If he can tune in from a cruise, y'all got no excuses for real. California, this man. Cali, dude. bro, Diego. Oh, go to Cali but all right, we're gonna go ahead and just get started. I'm so excited. Uh, again, welcome all those that are watching, joining live, guys. I encourage you before we start, do a couple things. Number one, open up your heart. Don't just hear it. Don't just 
come here just oh yeah just another Wednesday no 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 I want you to open up your heart number two I want you to take notes no takers are what change. world changers no takers are world changers number three right now I want you just to invite someone invite a family member invite a friend to tune in you know it's not about how much people join about the numbers but I believe this if we can reach more people that would be amazing and yeah so I'm excited so we're gonna go ahead and just get started with tonight's lesson tonight's lesson is titled the fallen state of humankind the fallen state of humankind and i want to start off my my homegirl ali is going to put the bible verses in the chat shout out to ali uh so you guys can read along so it says this romans uh chapter 5 verse 12 says therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sin. You see, the state of the world today uh, is shame. It's sickness. You can you can just turn on the news and you can see the chaos that's happening. Suicide, depression, anxiety, all these things are happening. And can I tell you why these things are happening? It all comes from one root, one root place, and that's called sin. sin. You know, I want to take you back uh, to just to the, the beginning. Uh, I want us to go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. And I want you guys to capture this. This is so, so beautiful. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17 says this. And the Lord commanded the man, speaking, that's Adam, saying, of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day, if you eat, you shall surely die. And let me just pause here right quick. Did you know, I want you guys to hear me out. Did you know that we were created to have intimacy with Jesus? Did you know that we were created to have intimacy with our father? I want you to think about it. When God created man and woman, he didn't create them to have a ministry. He didn't create them to, to work and do business and do all these things. No, no, no. The purpose of us, God created us. Our very purpose was for us to have a relationship with the father. If we look back at the Garden of Eden, God created Adam, God created Eve just to have communion with them, to rule, to, do, to have dominion over the earth with them, to live in relationship. The Bible says that Adam talked with God in the cool of the day. You know, so that's the original intention of us. I want you guys to understand that, that we were created, that you and I, Peter, Aliana, Alex, everyone in this chat, we were created to have relationship with our father. We were created to have intimacy. We were created to have fellowship. We were created to dwell and remain in communion with the Father. You see, God created us to walk in communion. You see, Adam and Eve, um, they walked in communion. You see it in the Bible. Adam talked to God in the cool of the day. But sadly, you see that they disobeyed. They, the Bible says they sinned. As The verse we just read right now, it said you can't eat the fruit of this tree. But what did they do? They didn't listen. Jeez. They ate the fruit of the tree. So um, if I were to describe sin, if I were to define sin in simple terms, sin is disobedience to God's authority. Sin is missing the mark of God's commandment. So humankind, uh, they disobeyed God, which is they sin against God. And the result of sin was to live separated from God. Thus, condemning our humanity to live in the fallen world. That's what we see today when you turn on the news and things. Sadly, because sin entered the world, sin continued. The Bible says we're born sinners, you know? So it's crazy that you see. And, and the reason why uh, sin is such a big thing, and my boy Peter, we're going to get into this a little bit more. The reason why sin is such a big deal is because sin is what separates, separates us from God. I want you to think about it for a second. The very thing we were created for, to have connection and relationship with the Father, sin separates us from God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, I don't know what exact verse, sin separates us from God. And not just that, uh, my boy Peter is going to get into it right now. Um, sin, sin, uh, the, way, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And I want you to go ahead and hit on that, my bro. So what's up? Yeah, like you said, the wages of sin is death. And like it says that this, look, we are all sinners. In Romans 3.23 of Ali, you can put it in the chat. It says that this, for all have sinned and fall short yeah. of the glory of God. No matter how good a person is, no matter how good you think you are, no matter who you is, we all have sinned. Matter of fact, 
since we were born, we were born into this world as sinners yeah. through the curse of what Adam and Eve did eating that apple on the cross. You know, so sin ruins people's lives and it separates us from God, like what Isaac said. So, but look, it's always been God's plan to return us back to him and away from that sinful lifestyle. So I want to talk about a couple yeah. of things. I want to talk about what does the fallen state of humanity includes? Well, yeah. So like number one, it includes physical death. In Genesis 3.19, if Ali, you could put it in the chat, it says this, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Yeah. So look, through the fall of man, through the fall of Adam and Eve, introduced disease, mm -hmm. death, all the horrors, all the stuff that you see in the world, like Isaac said, the shootings, the wars, bro, all that stuff, it's because that sin that they did, it opened up the door for all those traumatic and like horrific effects to be in the world so look we were supposed to to live forever with god in communion yeah. we're not supposed to die but through sin it caused a physical death so look these bodies they're gonna go away look at this bro wait bro our bodies are all gonna pass away and that is because of sin because of what adam and eve did so look um i want to uh talk about the verse if ali put that in the chat too <laughs> Ali's working fast. Come on. This Romans is, 6, 20, Romans 6, 23. It says this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus, our Savior. So look, so the second death is not just physical, but now it's spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. Come on. But look, so look, God wants us to live in eternity with him, but we can't live in eternity with him if we live in sin. Come on, straight up. So look, number one, physical death. Number two, a spiritual death. So it's two deaths. Don't get them confused. It's physical and spiritual. So look, Jesus, this is why Jesus needed to die for us on the cross. Yeah. To defeat the power of sin, to defeat the um to defeat death through his resurrection. So yeah. Um I wanna um read to you. Nehemiah um, 8.12. It says this, for have you, have you ever heard of the scripture that says this in Nehemiah 8.10? Um, it says this, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? Let the joy? Say it again. No, I think that was someone just, you're good. Oh, my bad. Like, so in Nehemiah, my bad, Nehemiah 8.10, it says, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. This is what Nehemiah said to the people when they were rebuilding the city. They were under threats. They were under persecution, a whole bunch of things. And he said this to them, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. What does that mean? Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. The joy of the Lord is to redeem you. The joy of the Lord is to forgive you, to forgive you of your sins. Like the joy of the Lord is to lift you up, not reject you, not condemn you. And look, let me give you an example of, of what I mean. Um, and Matthew talks about a prodigal son. He left his father's house and lost everything, the Bible says. It says that he wasted all his money on loose living. Um, in Luke 15, verse 18 through 19, if Ali put that in chat, it says this. I will go home to my father. As a matter of fact, before he said this, he wasted all his money. And he was broke and a famine hit and he was starving. Yeah. So... He's like, yeah, bro, I did all of this. I wasted all my money. I spent all this time away from my, my father's house. I left him. And now I'm nothing. I'm broke. I'm starving. And he decided to turn back to his father, to come back to him. Look, look what I'm trying to get at. So like in Luke 15, verse 18 through 19, it says this. This is what the son said. He said, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me as a hired servant. Servant. So look, he's like, now I'm not even your son, father. I just want to come back to you. So let me be your servant. I'll work for you as a slave. Like, you know how crazy that is? He felt that he messed up so bad. Yeah. He his father. He's wasted all his money. He's like, I'm not even worthy to be called your son anymore. Just let me come back to you at least as your servant. It's crazy. But look, let me ask you, what do you think the father reacted in that situation? Look, the father had great joy. What was the joy of the father? The joy of the father was to 
was to embrace him, not reject them. The joy of the father, if you keep oh. reading later on, it said that the joy of the father was to give him rings on his, on his fingers, sandals, new clothes. He welcomed him back into his house, lovingly embraced him. He did not reject them. And look, a lot of you may think like, oh, I sinned, I messed up, I, wow. I fallen away from God. God's condemning me. No, he's ready. He's calling on you. He wants you to come back to him. He wants to embrace you. He wants to restore you. He wants to forgive you. Most importantly, he wants to forgive you. Yeah. So yeah, and the joy of the father, later on in that, um, in that chapter, the joy of the father was to throw a big party because he said this, my son was once dead and now is alive. How many of us can agree with that? Well, look, we were once dead and now we are alive in Christ. So look, and even Jesus says that when one sinner repents, it is great joy in heaven. So just amazing, like with the father, uh, how the father accepts us back after we sinned and after we messed up. So yeah, um, so that scripture, what does it mean? Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. In other words, when you think of the goodness of God, when you think of the joy of the Lord, think of this. He wants to forgive you. He wants to redeem you. He wants to restore you. Some of you, he wants to restore your mind. He wants to restore your youth. Some of you have fallen into temptation with pornography or fornication. He wants to restore your purity. So is this speaking to some of you today? Look, say amen in the chat. This is speaking to you. Um, He wants to restore your heart. He wants to restore your relationship with him. Come on. So look, if you have fallen, his joy is to lift you back up. So when me and you give our life to Christ, when we receive Jesus, we become God's family. Look, and we immediately are redeemed. You are no longer under the curse of Adam and Eve. You are no, no longer under the curse of sin. You are now redeemed through what Jesus did on the cross, through his blood. That payment of the cross was through his blood, he said. And now we are able to be restored, forgiven, back into relationship with God. He bridged that gap between man and God. He bridged that gap between Adam and Eve, what they did. They broke the gap between man and God. But now he restored it. He made a bridge so so we can cross over and come to him, have a relationship with him, and live in his house. And, bro, it's just amazing. So now you have access to receive the joy of the Lord in your life. Isaac, you want to keep going on that? Isn't that spirit of fire, bro? Let's go. (laughs) Come on, that's so, so, so true. Um, Yeah, like Peter was saying, oh, I love how you talked about the joy. It's crazy because the Bible says Jesus uh, had the joy set before him. And yeah, speaking from a human point of view, how did he have joy in during the cross? How did he have joy getting whipped, getting lashed, getting spit at, getting hit, getting not just physically mistreated, but emotionally, mentally mistreated, People laughed at him. He was a son of God and people laughed at him. They spit at him. They said all these sort of things about him and they hung him on a cross. They put those nails in his hands and in his feet. And the word of God says that the joy was set before him. What joy did he have getting hung to a cross? What joy did he have getting hit, getting whipped, getting flogged? What joy did, I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem joyful to me. You see, Jesus was joyful. Because he was thinking about you. Come on. Make it personal. Jesus was so full of joy and during the cross because he said, you know what? I'm doing this because I know that if I do this, they can come to me and they can come and know my father. You know, I tell people, uh, I just said this in the live I was in uh, just a couple of minutes ago. Um, on that cross, Jesus, this, this is a Bible verse. I don't know where it is in Matthew chapter 26 or something. Jesus said, Father, why have you abandoned me? Another translation says, Father, Father, Abba, Abba, why have you forsaken me? Jesus said that on the cross. And I personally believe that Jesus said that because on that cross, Jesus was rejected by the Father so we can be accepted by him. On that cross, Jesus, you know, on the Garden of Gethsemane, um, you see Jesus was in deep anguish. He was sweating blood. You know the science behind that? It's crazy, sweating blood. He was in deep anguish, deep pain, deep sorrow because of what he was about to endure. But what I believe, Jesus wasn't, of course, a part of it was physically. He was going to get crucified. He was going to get whipped and all these things. But I believe he was like that because he knew that he was going to be separated from the Father. But yet the Bible says he endured it because the joy set before him because he knew that if he did this, if he did that on the cross, 
that we can come to him and have a relationship with him. Yeah, man. So, Wait, can I say something before you move on? Course, yeah. Bro, matter of fact, like when you were talking, do you remember the last words that Jesus said? It is finished. Like that's a crazy last words to say you're about to die. You've been tortured to death. And your last words are, it, it is finished. finished. What did he mean by that? You may ask. He meant that it is finished. The debts of our sin has been paid. The wages, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That means we worked our whole life. We earned it. Whole life of sinning and sinning and sinning. What do we earn? We earn death. Wow. But look, he paid our debts. He paid it. Look, we had a big debt that we could not pay. We could not. We could not pay the debt. But Jesus on that cross, it is finished. He took the money. Paid our debt. So he restored paid it by us. blood, bro. Shit paid it by blood. Like, come on, bro. Like, That's how so much crazy. love is that that you have to to do so that? Crazy. So crazy. So yeah, like Peter's saying. So, what does the fallen state of humanity include? Number one, physical death. Number two, spiritual death. And we're gonna start ending soon. Number three, the third point, the flesh nature. I want us to go to Galatians chapter five, verse nineteen to twenty. That says this. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, luridness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jeal jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, decisions, and heresies. You see, in the fallen state, man without God, and like without, like without Holy Spirit, without God in our lives, we live in our flesh. Like we spoke about last time, we spoke about it. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have uh, flesh. No, we have a body, soul, and a spirit. And our flesh, we spoke about this last week, by the way, that was so powerful. We spoke about dying to self, we spoke about surrender. Um, we have this flesh. And when we live in sin, we feed the flesh. And I want you guys to just, I love painting pictures and, and like giving examples. Imagine uh, you have a pet, I don't know, lion, right? He's a little baby cub, little baby cub. The more you feed him, the more he grows. See, he started off as a cute baby cub, baby lion, cute. You feed him, whatever. But the more you feed him, the more dangerous he becomes. And eventually, the lion eats you. I saw this picture on, on social media once, and it's a perfect example. The more you feed it, the more dangerous it becomes. And the more you feed it, eventually, it will kill you. And that's the same with sin. When you feed your flesh, it kills you spiritually and uh, physically so sin sin is flesh is food i want you to think about it that way and it's crazy um consequently the flesh rules and takes uh takes over us when we're not surrendering to the lord but let me say this i got good news however um when we surrender to the holy spirit when we make this when we make the decision to die to self and to choose and pursue to follow jesus the flesh begins to die so what does the fallen state of humanity include? Number one, physical death. Number two, spiritual death. And number three, flesh nature. And it's crazy because we speak about this all the time. Look, yes, God loves you. We were created to have a relationship with him. But God doesn't love your sin. And I love I love saying this. Like, hey, Peter, you have a dog, Bruno. That guy is crazy. On, <laughs> you love <bro>. your dog. <laughs> you love your dog. But you don't like his fleas. It's the same with us. God loves us. But he doesn't love our sin. And let me be very clear. God does not hate people. God hates sin because it separates us from him. Matter of fact, that's why he sent Jesus on the cross. Like Peter was saying, to, to, um, to pay that debt. To pay that debt that we can never pay. To die for our sins. And he didn't just die for us. But he died as us. And I want to understand you that this world, you can see it. We're living in sin and it's just disgusting and it's terrible. This world is in need of a savior. And I know I got good news for someone tonight. His name is Jesus. You see, the Bible, uh, people say, if God is so loving and caring, like you talk about, why does he send people to hell? God does not send people to hell. Your own sin does. But God gave us a way out. And that way out is named Jesus. And I know many of you heard this before. Maybe you're hearing this for the first time, but this is real. The gospel is not a fairy tale. The gospel is not just a story that happened or, or a historic account. No, Jesus is still alive today. And I want to tell you that I have good news that on that cross, like I said, Jesus overcame. Look, I love this. And I want us to go to Romans chapter six. Uh, if Ali can put it in chat. Uh, I'm going to read it in NLT. Uh, Romans chapter six. It says this. Uh, Romans chapter six, verse five. It says this. Since we have been united with him in his death, 
we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful, uh, sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin may lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Come on, that's powerful. Can you guys understand that the word of God says, because of Jesus, we are no longer slaves to sin. And I want us to go to uh, verse 10 right quick. Um, when he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. Verse 11. Verse 11. So you should also, so you should also yourself yourself to be dead to the power of sin and alive to Christ Jesus. I want you guys to understand that Jesus didn't just die for our sin, but he overcame sin. You see, people make sin like this big, bad thing. And yes, it is bad. But, you know, I disagree with this so much that people say, oh, we're going to die of sin and we're going to sin every day. We're not perfect. I understand that we're human. We're going to make mistakes. But look, there's a difference between sinning, making, making a mistake, and there's a difference between living a lifestyle of sin. You see, the Bible says that we were sinners, but now we're saints. The Bible says to reckon, to, to consider yourself dead to sin. And I want you guys to understand that. And I want that to become your greatest reality. You see, many people think of God's grace as a license to sin. But God's grace is not a license to sin. God's grace is the ability and the empowerment that he gives us to live and walk in holiness and righteousness, to live like Jesus. You see, because of God's grace, we become righteous. And I love the book of Romans because it talks all about this. We are not righteous because of what we do. We're not righteous because of our works. We're righteous because of the works of Jesus. We're righteous because not what we do, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. And I want you guys to understand that, that sin, yes, sin entered the world. And you can see it throughout the whole Bible. Look, if you're going to get one thing from the whole Bible, you see how human beings are so messed up. King after king, generation after generation, we kept sinning. And, and people in the Old Testament, as you read, people had to sacrifice animals. They had to sacrifice, they, they would usually use a lamb. They had to sacrifice lambs to cover or atone for their sins. And sadly, human beings kept messing up. And that's what they, that's why... God sent Jesus, and that's why John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God, that he would be our sacrifice, that he would take our place. And really quick, I don't know if David, David, if you're here, uh, I'm going to just pass it on to him. And I want I want you guys to hear, hear what he says. Go ahead, David. David. Yes, sir. All right. Give me a second, guys, my bad. All right. So, you guys, we just want to take a moment just to talk about exactly what Isaac and P were talking about, you know, as they were saying, we fell short in the garden. When it started in the garden, we fell short. We fell short of the glory of God. And Eve and Adam ate from the apple. And that's where sin started. And so listen, I want to talk to you guys today. Maybe you're struggling with sin. Maybe you've been struggling with a life of um, secret, a secret life of sin, or maybe you've been struggling with, you know, something simple, like maybe you've been struggling with just loss, maybe you've been struggling with depression, anxiety, whatever it is, I want to let you know, there where you are, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you, and he died on the cross for you, and I want to let you know that you are loved, and I want to let you know he can set you free from that sin. He can set you free from everything. So maybe you say, David, you know what? I've been dealing with sin. I've been dealing with depression. I've been dealing with thoughts of insecurities. Or maybe I felt like I've fallen short of the glory of God. Maybe, maybe you felt like even Adam where you ate from the apple in your life. I want to let you know tonight you can be set free. And so maybe if that's you, I just want you to put an emoji in the chat, thumbs up or something. And we want to pray for you tonight. So, yeah, guys, we're just going to pray for you guys. And I want you guys to just repeat this prayer after me. If you guys just want to accept God into your heart as your Lord and Savior, if you guys want to be set free from whatever you guys have been dealing with, I just want you guys to repeat this prayer after me. Father God, today I recognize that I am a sinner and that because of my sins, I have been separated from you. Come into my life. Change me. And transform me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And guys, 
for those of you guys who just made that prayer, we just want to thank you guys so much for that prayer that you guys just made for accepting God into your heart. But I just want to let you guys know that even though you guys made that prayer, that's not just how it works. It's not just that prayer that, that sets you free, but now you have to, you know, pick up your cross and walk with God. You have to pick up that cross and walk with him. So tonight, if you made that prayer, we want to help you walk with God. We want to connect with you. We want to help you in this new journey and this, in this, you know, this new journey that you just accepted to take a part on. So if you guys did that prayer with us, just private chat me, Isaac or Pete, Whoever you want to private chat, and we're going to get your information. We're going to connect with you guys, and we want to help you guys in this journey that you just made. Amen? All right, Isaac, I'll pass it back on to you, bro. Amen, amen. Yes, look, if you made the decision, we celebrate with you. This is not just, you know, something you just repeat. No, no, no. This is the greatest decision you can ever make. And, okay, so what I felt in my heart tonight uh, as I was praying earlier Many of you, yes, you have, uh, you gave your life to God, you surrendered, yes. But what I feel like the Lord wants to do tonight, and I want you guys to, to just stay connected. I want you to, I want you to stay connected. What I feel like the Lord wanted to do is I felt in my heart that 